Hi everyone, I'm Daniel Roth, product manager at Microsoft for Blazor. Blazor is a web UI framework built on the mature foundation of .NET to enable greater performance, productivity, and security when building modern web apps. Today's web apps use a variety of approaches to deliver the best UI experiences. Some pages are rendered from the server in response to requests so that the UI loads almost immediately and is easily indexed. In other cases, it's easier to handle the UI from the client so that you get rich interactivity and access to client capabilities. With Blazor and .NET 8, you can handle all of your web UI needs using Blazor's convenient component model from both the client and the server. Let me show you how. So this recipe app is built entirely using Blazor. On the home page, we can see a bunch of recipes and we can click on a recipe to see all of its details. If we look at the browser dev tools to see what this app looks like, we can see, let's, let's look at everything and refresh the page. We can see there's no WebAssembly being downloaded for this app. There are no web sockets being set up. There's not even any JavaScript being downloaded. This entire app is being fully rendered from the server. So it loads almost instantly and is ready to scale. No JavaScript required. In .NET 8, you can use Blazor components to do full server-side rendering. Now let's look at the code to see how this is implemented. Here's the project. Let's look at the component for the home page and also the component for that recipe details page. Now, each of these components is set up as a routable endpoint. For example, right here, we can see the route for the recipe details page. As requests come to the server, they're routed to the component, and the component renders full HTML right to the uh, response. Now, we can also handle form posts from our application. Let's go back to the app and close the dev tools. So for example, here on the home page, we can search for all the recipes that have chocolate. Um, that was a form post to do the search. If we click on one of these recipes and go down to the bottom, we can see there's this little widget for posting a review on the recipe. This one is delicious, and let's submit that. And then we can see that the review was added to the bottom of the page. If we submit the form without adding any data, you can see that validation works too. How is this form implemented? Let's go back to the code. So here's the recipe details page. If we scroll down, here's the star rating reviews component that's setting up that widget. Let's go to its definition. All right. And then here we can see that we're using the built-in Blazor edit form and input components to implement this uh, to implement this form. These components will model bind the data and validate it before calling your uh, submit event handler, all from the server. Okay, so that's great. Um, now we can actually enhance the user experience of this app uh, to make it even better. So let's go back to the application. Um, now, currently, each navigation, like if we go back to the home page, every time we navigate, we're actually doing a full page load. So you might even see a little UI blip as the page gets completely reloaded. That's a little jarring. Also, if we go back to like the, the review form, and let's post another review, you may have noticed, and if I submit this, that we are also losing the scroll position. Again, that's because we're doing a full page load when we submit the form. We can improve the navigation and form handling experience by adding some client-side logic. So let's go back to our application. Let's go to main layout.razor. This is the main layout for this application. And at the bottom, I'm just gonna add the Blazor script. And then let's go ahead and restart the app. But with that script, Blazor will now enhance page navigations and form handling. Let's just wait for that to start. All right, cool. So now that it's loaded, so if we navigate, let's, let's for example, navigate to one of the recipes and go back. It, it navigates fast and silky smooth. There's no longer that UI blip. That's because Blazor is intercepting every navigation and then handling the uh, response content and using it to update the page, uh, updating the DOM of the page without having to fully load the page. So much smoother navigation experience. And then if we go to one of these recipes and submit the form, let's add another review. You know, maybe this one's just okay. 
we'll submit that one. Notice that the review gets added to the bottom and we don't lose the scroll position anymore. Now, sometimes, let's go back to the home page. Pages need to perform long running async tasks in order to fully render. Like maybe you need to get some data from a database or call an API. This can delay the rendering of a page. Uh, to simulate this, let's go back to our app and let's go to the where we're loading the recipe data in this recipe store. And I'm gonna add some code to simulate a database query. So here in this get recipes page, let's add a little code right here. And then we'll restart this. So this is just a task.delay as if we're making a long, long running database query. We'll go ahead and restart that. Cool. All right. So now if we refresh the home page, I'm going to click 1 1000, then the page finishes loading. It's a little easier to see if we go to a recipe and then I'm going to click back. Ready? Click 1 1000, then the page loads. So we have to wait for all those long running async tasks to complete in order to fully render the page. Now with Blazor in .NET 8, we can improve the perceived load time of the page that have pages that have long running async tasks by using streaming rendering. Streaming rendering allows the page to render with placeholder content while the async tasks are running. When the tasks are completed, the new content can be streamed to the client on the same response connection and then patched by Blazor into the DOM. Now to enabling streaming rendering, it's really easy. Let's just, let's go to the home page of the app. Let's do this on index.razor. And we're just gonna add an attribute at the top of the page, the stream rendering uh, true attribute. And that will turn on streaming rendering for our home page. Now notice like right here, you'll see there's this, if recipes is null, then we're gonna render the this loading recipes placeholder. So that'll be important to watch for that in just a second. All right, let's go back to the app. Okay, so now if we, I think it's right, if we refresh the page, yeah, you see there's that little loading recipes dot, dot, dot that shows up. So we can get rid of these guys. There we go. So let's see, let's refresh it one more time. Refresh, loading recipes dot, dot, dot. And then once the database query has completed, the updated content is seamlessly patched into the existing page. So you get pixels on the screen really fast and your app feels much more responsive. Okay, now so far our Blazor app is still only using server-side rendering with some framework pro provided uh, enhancements on the client. Now it's time to add some client interactivity. So this application also has a page where we can submit new recipes. There's this recipe editor page. And we want this page to have a more sophisticated UI. Like for example, we wanna be able to choose a picture that we upload and be able to see a little preview it, uh, of it right here on the page. Right now we're just getting the file name. We also have this like ingredients uh, list builder where we wanna be able to add ingredients and uh, be able to edit and reorder them using drag and drop. And right now, if I click this add button to add an ingredient, it doesn't even do anything yet. That's because this page is using just server-side rendering. It's not set up for interactivity yet. Let's fix that. Let's add some interactivity. Let's start with just this ingredients list editor. Let's go back to the app. And let's go to that submit recipe page. So down here is the ingredients list editor component that we saw. And I'm just gonna add an attribute, render mode. And we're gonna set the render mode for this uh, component to be, well, something. Let's, let's see, we have a couple of options. We can do server, which means that the interactivity for this component will be handled over a WebSocket connection using Blazor server. Or we could use WebAssembly, in which case the interactivity will be handled uh, from the client in the browser running on WebAssembly. Uh, let's start out with server. So we'll do server first, all right? And then we'll go ahead and restart. All right, cool. So let's go back to that submit recipe page. And now if we go to our ingredient list uh, builder, we should be able to add some ingredients. Let's add some flour. Yes, it's working. Some eggs, I don't know, maybe a few uh, ducks. You know, it doesn't really matter, but uh, we can switch between the units from metric to imperial. We can even drag and drop our, our ingredients to reorder them. This is now an island of interactivity using Blazor server within our broader server-side rendered application. 
Now we really want this whole page to be interactive. So we can do that too. Let's go back to the application. And I'm actually gonna remove that render mode attribute that we just added. Let's add some data binding for the ingredients. But up at the top, I'm gonna add another attribute to this submit recipe page to say that I want the render mode for this whole page to be server. Okay, so let's go ahead and restart that. Great. Okay, let's go back to that submit recipe page. And now we should be able to select a picture. And instead of just seeing the file name, we get a picture preview. We can still add our ingredients. That works fine. We can even submit the whole form and get client side validation uh, working great. So now the whole page is interactive using Blazor Server. And what's really cool is that the rest of the app is still using server side rendering. If we go back to the home page and let's bring back up those browser dev tools. And let's refresh the page to see everything that's being downloaded. So initially, we don't have any WebSocket connections being set up. No Blazor server yet. But if we browse to that submit recipe page, there it is. Now we have the uh, Blazor server WebSocket connection being, being set up. And when we leave that page, the connection can be uh, uh, closed down and any server side state can be freed up so that we reduce the load on our server. You use Blazor server just where it's needed. Now we can use Blazor WebAssembly as well. So if we go back to that, uh, that page and instead of using server, we set this up as WebAssembly, we can do that too. Now, one thing I want you to notice is that there's only one project here. We don't need a separate project for our Blazor WebAssembly code. And that's thanks to multi-targeting. We're able to build for both the client and the server from this one project. Okay, so now if we go back to that submit recipe page, we should still see that the interactivity is working. Let's make sure that's functional. Yes, it's working. But let's go back to the home page and bring up the browser dev tools to see what's happening this time. If uh, first I'm going to clear out all the site data just to make sure we don't have any Blazor WebAssembly stuff uh, pre-cached. So now if we uh, refresh this home page, okay, do we have any WebAssembly? No WebAssembly yet, but if we browse to the submit recipes page. There, now we're seeing the .NET WebAssembly runtime being downloaded and set up and being used. If we have any other pages in our app that are using Blazor WebAssembly, uh, they can reuse this downloaded runtime uh, because it's cached for the entire application. All right, cool. So we can set up interactivity for our app using Blazor Server or Blazor WebAssembly, and we can do that on a per component basis or for entire pages. That's really nice. But maybe you'd prefer to have that decision to be made automatically at runtime. You might do something clever, like start users off with Blazor Server, which loads fast, while you download the .NET WebAssembly runtime in the background. That way, the app can switch to use Blazor WebAssembly on future visits if it has been previously cached. What might that look like? All right, let's go back to the app one more time, and we're going to switch the render mode to auto, use an auto rendering mode. And let's restart the application, see what that does. Okay, I think we can close all these other tabs. All right, let's bring up the browser dev tools one last time. And again, let's clear out any site data to make sure we don't have any Blazor WebAssembly stuff pre-cached. Let's refresh the page. Okay, do we have any WebAssembly yet? No WebAssembly. Do we have any WebSockets? No WebSockets. But if we browse to the submit recipe page, there, now we see the Blazor server WebSocket being set up, but also in the background, we're downloading that .NET WebAssembly runtime. Now, which one's being used? Well, if we look in the dev console, we can see that this app is currently running over a WebSocket. So it's using Blazor server, but it's got the .NET WebAssembly runtime downloaded and cached. So when we browse to this app again, like we can just refresh the page. Now we can see in the browser dev console that we're running on WebAssembly. We're using Blazor WebAssembly. The app detected that the runtime was already there and it just used it. So we're able to you know, save on those precious uh, server resources. Super cool. So our app is now using the best of server and client thanks to the new full stack web UI support in Blazor in .NET 8. In this demo, we've seen server-side rendering using Blazor components, enhanced navigation and form handling, streaming rendering, adding client-side interactivity per component or per page, and the ability to select the appropriate render mode at runtime. 
I hope you enjoyed learning about Blazor in .NET 8. There's plenty more that's new in Blazor to make your next web project easier and more productive. Be sure to give it a try today by downloading .NET 8. Thanks for listening.